What's going on, good people? This is the man, the myth, the legend, D. Fitch. Um, it's been a while. You know, I post videos like my little Walmart zones, second stint with Walmart. My God, it's been almost 14 months. I'm almost three years in total. But um, I wanted to start this video by saying um, rest in peace to my cousin, Ashanti Hamilton. Um, she passed away. She wasn't even 24 years old. She's had a lot of sicknesses throughout her life. Uh, something with the left eye. I remember when I was 12, I, I turned 33 on Monday. So this child, I've known her almost 20 something years. You know, most of my life at that could be, you know, rest in peace to my aunt, her grandmother, who also passed three years ago in 2020. Lost a few family members that year. Um, as a grandmother, she used to host a lot of different things for Thanksgiving, uh, New Year's Eve, stuff of that nature. So another one of my family members is now gone. Up in heaven. I haven't really been talking to my father lately. Things have been kind of iffy between us. I reunite with my mom a little bit more. I haven't spoken to her for years prior to these last several months, last year, etc. On to the present. So it's family is what it is. You have to take everything with a great assault. I wanted to make a nice little 20 ish, whatever, how long my voice takes me in this video, minutes video about life, where I am, just something to uplift you, the viewers, whoever watches. You know, I have a few of these deep in my nearly 8,000 videos, my main channel, King Fitch, over the years, just uh, for the sake of uplifting. Just being a voice of reason during uh, tough times in 2023, whether, you know, in California, America, or, um, you know, in the world. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. So for me, life is a blessing. Happily married, two years, been with my woman, my wife, the love of my life, Lois, for almost 13 years, just past 12 years, August 11, 2023. You know, now we're going, we're entering, working towards the 13th year of next year. Obviously, that's months away. That's 2024. My birthday is Monday. God's will, I wake up alive, make it, because not every day is guaranteed. And I get people are religious or semi-religious like myself. I'm kind of balanced enough. That was one thing that kind of led me to not talking to my father anymore because he's overwhelmingly religious. He doesn't see the balance of everything around him like that. But he's 72 years old. You know, uh, different ideologies, different. He comes from South Carolina. I grew up in New York for 60 years, back to South Carolina. He's doing his own thing. I've helped him, try to help him survive, you know, do what a, a quality child, son, uh, Ken would do for somebody related to him or close to them. But for me, it's like I just want to live my own life in peace without being judged for every single decision that I decide to make. Now, I worked in Wall Street. I worked in good spots, bad spots, spots that didn't hire me back. I was heartbroken. I applied for jobs and felt like it was racism because I'm black. I had quality interviews and, you know, it's the same generic message. I'm sorry, we can't accept you right now. And the emails and I called like, OK, thank you for your time. It's a waste of my time. And maybe it's a waste of theirs, but I don't know, you know, but I take life very seriously. I take my work at Walmart very seriously, more than anyone should. But, you know, get, does it stress me out? Does it get on my nerves? Without a doubt. One of my team leads resigned and he moved to another department in the store, Cap 2. I used to do Cap 2, unload trucks, pull pallets. You know, I didn't, I'm not forklift certified, but I did all of this. I worked in seven departments between 2019 and 2021. I got COVID the first time. Around that time, I ended up just putting my two weeks noticing and just quitting. I was mentally out of it. My mental health was just, <clears throat> but as far as I was just tired of the system. And I obviously I had to go back because uh, the whole going for my bachelor's thing didn't work. But I did get my associates in 2019. I just took a few more classes after that at my uh, junior college out here. But I've been in college for seven and a half years. So I gained a lot of knowledge, a lot of education read articles, a lot of different projects, just continue to balance myself, keep, my, keep myself whole as a human being, as a black man in California, let alone America, happily married with a big family, extended family. 
So just making sure I do right by them, right by myself and whatever I need to do to be successful in the world, that's always going to be out to get me. You know, I see the good in the world, but I also am a realist and I do see the bad. I see the negatives. I see things and circumstances that I may not always have control over, but I try to find a balance to keep things, you know, within my own means because the world is what it is. You have to take it every day with literally a grain of salt, like I mentioned earlier. So for me, it's like just finding a sense of peace, a sense of balance, sense of loyalty. Those family, friends who are still loyal to me, God bless. This is the time of the year. Usually it's October, November, December. I send almost 50 cards every year or give out to those very close to me out here in California. Just made 10 years last month of living in California since I left Brooklyn, New York. I'm, for those who don't know, if you're new to the channel, I'm from Harlem, New York. Our hats up, H-Town to the finest. I lived in all five boroughs, respectfully, Cambria Heights, Queens, Jamaica, Mariners Harbor, West New Brighton, uh, Castleton. I mean, not Castle, Castleton Avenue, but uh, I lived in Staple, Stapleton. In that part of Staten Island, I lived in South Bronx. I lived uh, over by uh, Burnside Avenue. I lived in Harlem, 125th Fifth Avenue. I lived uh, 118th Street between St. Nicholas and 8th Avenue. 158th Street in Amsterdam Avenue. Over there, borderline Washington Heights, borderline Harlem. I lived in the Polo Grounds and the projects for about three years with my aunt when I was in foster care. 2008 to 2011, aged out of foster care, moved to Brooklyn, was in Crown Heights and bed -Stuy. and I lived in Canarsie for a week in a foster home with this lady who was super, super strict. I couldn't even play Pokemon Fire Red on the Game Boy or her other stuff. Uh, my foster sibling at the house, she didn't even let us eat cereal in the morning. There was times I starved. Like, I've been through so much. I've been around gangbangers, like Crips, Bloods. I was going to fight some Bloods. Like, I... I've been around some sh stuff like I ain't no punk, but, you know, I know how to pick my battles, too. You know, I'm too old for the nonsense, but I don't, you know, back down from disrespect either. You know, I've had my share of battles with family, with friends, with people I don't even know tried me and failed. So it's like, psh, miss me with that shit. But, you know, excuse my French for any young people watching under 15. But my, my point is, I've been through a lot, and I want to tell you guys that if you've gone through a lot, everybody goes through something. You have to find a sense of peace to combat everything that you got going on that's negative in your life. You have to find the little blessings, the little good things in the world, whether it be, you know, just waking up every morning. I always, I know I'm on Twitter a lot. I'd be like, thanks be to God for another day of life. I put the blessing emojis and things like that, and I say, hashtag amen. You know, that's me. That's my faith and how I believe, you know, this right here, my marriage ring, it's very extremely important to me. Do not take that for granted. This is a covenant, you know, married, don't ever disrespect your spouse. And likewise, they to not disrespect you as well. But for me, it's like my life has been a blessing. I've had good. I've had a lot of good. But I've also had a lot of bad, you know, I found out my cousin literally passed away hours ago today it, it breaks my heart however it does give me the will to continue to move on because slowly i'm becoming one of the last surviving members on my side of the family on my dad's side i've lost probably seven family members on my dad's side of the family in a matter of five years to sicknesses covid related heightening other illnesses and just you know death itself I'm 32 years old. I grew up in the, I'm a generation Y. I'm a millennial. I think it's between 1981, 1996. It's considered generation Y or millennial. Either term is pretty accurate or precise. But, you know, for me, it's like I grew up in a time in Harlem, New York, where you had ice cream trucks and ice cream cones were $1. You, you know, I grew up with the Metro cards still around, but they're like two, two ninety, three dollars $3 now for one single fare. And, you know, jumping the turnstile is very difficult to do, you know, without getting a ticket. Call. I got a ticket just for walking through the train car. So it was $75 and it went up to like 125 I was in Brooklyn taking the C train, I think uptown, Notion Avenue or whatever, and some guy showed me a gold badge, undercover MTA police, I kid you not. Gave me, he took my information, we got off the train, and I, you know, 
I ignored it for like six months. But you know, I fought, being in foster care, I didn't really have an adequate job. I was 16 years old at the time. I worked summer jobs. I worked my first job at 11. But that was a different time. I was in Harlem with my mom, and she kind of regulated the money I got from those checks. You know, give me a few dollars here and there because I was only elementary school. I didn't understand how to use money yet. But then back in the day, you could buy a bag of chips, quarter, 50 cent drink for like one dollar. I grew up right there on 118th Street. You know, there's a place called the Red Roost. I think Barack and Michelle Obama went there. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. But life is what you make and you have to really understand that. And once you understand that, everything else will be a breeze. I'm not saying it's going to just be some life. Life is everybody got their own paths, right? We all intersect somehow through somebody or some situation or something, some force of nature of God. Whatever you believe in, whether you believe in God or not, there is definitely forces of, out there deeper than us. I ain't trying to get too deep with somebody come after me in the black vans, but you get what I'm saying. My whole point is, you know, I've been through a lot. We all go through something, but you have to find peace and joy in the little things to over combat those feelings of negativeness. I don't even think that's a word, but hey, those feelings of anguish and sorrow and sadness and pain. You have to really fight, really, really uplift yourself as well as you uplift others to find a balance, a sense of peace. And that's key. That is so key, you know. For me, I just wanted to say I appreciate you, those who stayed with me over the years. If you haven't, that's fine. I don't even expect to get paid by YouTube anymore. Well, at the at the time I was trying to work to push to work for YouTube, it's like I didn't hit the watch hours. I was closing in on like three thousand. I got to twenty three thousand one hundred plus subscribers. I've lost a couple thousand over the last two or three years. I have about almost eight thousand videos. The views are they fluctuate. They go up and down. Shorts obviously is where the bread and butter is of YouTube watching. But for me, I just post what I like. I love my Lakers. I love the Knicks. You know, Yankee Knicks, unfortunately, didn't win the in-season tournament matchup against the Bucks. But shout out to Julius Randle. I've had a love-hate relationship for him over the years as a Laker and a Knicks fan. I root for both franchises for almost 29 years. Being from New York and reading, not really watching, but reading about Kobe Bryant getting traded as a draft pick. You know what I'm saying? As a kid. So it's like I am at that age where I've seen the beginning of social media, the evolution, the beginning of Google, Yahoo, and these different email platforms. I grew up around AOL, you got mail, and MSN, and IBM computers, the Square, Macintosh computers in my elementary schools in Harlem, New York City Board of Education type shit. So it's like I've seen the evolution of technology and the history of it in 25 plus years. Ellen, five years old. That picture right there in the back. My wife will love, uh, like, I love you. And my two sisters, when they were in, we all three of us went to the same elementary school. Obviously, I'm 12 or 14 years apart from my sister. I'm older than them. But I have a 42 year old sister with multiple kids as well. So, you know, different fathers, different circumstances. But life is what it is. Now, I don't even talk to my father. I spoke to my dad in like six months almost. Not six months, maybe four. But. It is what it is, you know, he did it to himself because I'm not going to tolerate disrespect, not even from the man who helped birth me. My mom almost squeezed my head when I was born December 11, 1990. She was crushing my skull because she was panicking when she was pushing me out. <laughs> Funny story about that bitch. I'm like, man, it's crazy. And, you know, I've watched over both my parents over the years. My mom stayed with me in my apartment before I, the last year, 2011, 2012, 2013, when I was about to move out to California. I was working on moving out here to be with my wife at the time, girlfriend. We've been together 12 years. So, you know, at that time we was talking, right? And we took our time because a lot of people, they rush into relationships. Is it sex or emails, and dating, sexing, all that stuff. You know, you have to really take your time with all that stuff. This is word to the wise, you know, take your time. Don't listen to your peers, you know, because they're not always there for you. They're about to get you. They have bad intentions. You have to really trust your own heart, trust your own gut and your intuitions when it comes to relationships and love. Loving family members is 
let alone loving someone to be your future husband, future wife, future spouse, you know? So it's like, be, be wiser about your decisions that you make. I know there's certain regrets I have, but you know, I don't probably, I can't even remember what the hell they are, what the hell they were. I even think about them off the top of my head. You know, I've worked many jobs over a span of 21 years on and off summer jobs, great jobs. I've met at least 75 celebrities over a span of 25 years. And I'm grateful to God for all the experiences I've had in New York, as well as my 10 years in California, my 22 years born and raised in New York. You have to understand, like, life is what you make it. You can't just sit around all day and mope around. You know, you have to find peace in everything. Like I said a little bit earlier in this video, I'm about 15 plus in 1542 and counting. You know, you have to find joy in the little things. And that's what I've been doing lately. You know, I tweet and I love, I watch my sports. I work at Walmart. 15 to 32 hours a week, three, four days of even that because they've been cutting my hours. I moved to another department, been there almost 14 months in my second stint with Walmart, did the referee thing for 15 months on the side. We're working with Walmart. So I am trying to eventually get out of Walmart again and find something a little bit better. The minimum wage could be just at least over 16, 17, 15, 60 an hour. And I'm good with that. I'm out. For me, it's like, it's not always about the money I can been pretty balanced with how I manage things, you know, help pay bills, rent, supply, do what you got to do what I have to do, but everybody has to do what they got to do for the, for them and theirs, like you and you, you and yours, me and mine type shit, right? So for me, it's like just finding the peace to not let Walmart get under my skin because those corporate, man, they're out for themselves, themselves only. They try to offer pizza and do Christmas pajama days in December. I do want that Christmas hat, though, so I'll be getting that soon. But for me, it's like, it's not just that. It's like trying to find a balance in everything. If I do, ever do plan to go back to school, I'll go from there. I don't even think I will right now. I'm just trying to survive in a world that's already four times harder for me because I'm black, I'm Haitian. I think I have Mexican blood too. Ironically, my mom's got Spanish in her and stuff like that. Native American, fourth generation, Haitian American. I'm African American. I'm born American. I am American. You know, I ain't know some crazy nationalist shit, but you know, I'm proud to be an American, even though America's not proud to have me in America. <laughs> bars. That's bars. I used to really rap, but no, the point is. Life is really what you make it. For me, it's just finding a balance and my sense of peace and the little things. And waking up every morning is one of those little things. But it's a big thing. It's one of the biggest things we all have as human beings is waking up another day, you know, leading to something significant in our life, whatever that may be. It could just be waking up and go take a piss or just going to get something to eat at a fast food spot even. You have to really find your niche. Find your joy. And, you know, this is coming from someone who's had both good and bad uh, situations, experiences in his own life. But I wish everybody the greatest peace in the world, even to my enemies, whoever they may be. They don't always reveal themselves, but they're there. You know, the devil is a liar. Um... But uh, for me, it's just continue to push forward, you know, get buckets. I'm playing some hoops tonight. So you already know I'm post the videos here to make hits. But this your boy, King Fitch. God bless you. Stay lit. Don't ever worry about the nonsense in the mix. This is me off this video real quick. Little 19 minute vid. This is what it is. But I do this for everybody, including the kids. I always do it big. I'm Harlem 19. You guys stay blessed. Stay active on the scene. One. What's going on? This your guy, King Fitch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's it. Hit that notification bell for some hits. And I'm off this vid. Stay blessed. You